good evening and thank you for coming. This is our second open budget meeting. It really is an opportunity for you to give input. And that is the benefit and the beauty of it. If I had to try and condense it into probably a couple of words, and I have a little bit more latitude than my colleagues because I'm setting the framework as opposed to just being limited to the three minutes. But if I had to uh, try and give you a couple of words, think of economic toolkit, think of follow the money, and probably if you had to be of a religious bent and you were thinking of a parable, think of the parable of the fish and the loaves where we are seeing and seeking a way to make and do more with less. But you're doing more with less by looking at how you can keep the people in the picture and how you can allocate resources so you can best provide for those areas that are vulnerable. I think it's also important to think of open budget being exactly what it is. It's providing an opportunity for you as the public to participate. It's also the issue of greater transparency. And what's the context? Because budgets, just like in our personal lives, we have to make choices. And we've got to decide what are the priorities for our choices. This is opening the door in terms of setting the government's ground rules in terms of fiscal policy and allowing you to walk in and to give some input. Now the context is that the bottom line is that sluggish international growth may continue to limit Bermuda's ability to increase its GDP to generate employment opportunities and to increase government revenues in order to support a budget to support the economy. There is a funding gap, a financing gap, and the challenge, the challenge is to take action to stimulate the economy so as to protect jobs and yet deal with the sober reality of decreased revenues. Now what is the solution? Some of it will come from you tonight. We have a view, I have a view, but part of this process is also to solicit input and get feedback. Either the government has to continue to borrow to bridge the funding gap, or it has to cut spending to accommodate actual revenues, which are certainly softer and less. And of course, the elephant in the room, which no government during this time would wish to do, is obviously to increase taxation. Now, if you cut spending, that will result in public sector downsizing, and it could lead to increased weakness in the private sector. Now, other countries have decided to give a lower priority to strictly adhering to fiscal rules, such as debt ceilings, while there is this financial turbulence. And they have given a greater priority to what can stimulate the economy, what can keep people working. Now, this means there's more flexibility, but you certainly can't be prudent and throw fiscal rules out the window. But you certainly should be trying to adopt a more dynamic framework, and that is the benefit and the beauty of adopting a multi-year economic framework. It gives greater flexibility while also ensuring you have a sustainable domestic policy, and you're rejigging until you get greater economic stability. And this way you also aren't locking yourself into a rigid stance which can paralyze action. Now Bermuda has certainly seen a sharp increase in the level of absolute level of debt. And there is volatility on the revenue side. And there hasn't been the same degree of flexibility on the expenditure side. I think the uh, Minister of um, Social Policy, I call him Minister Blakeney, last week up in Southampton, certainly spoke to the people present as to the increased level of financial aid and assistance that required. So while you can say, let's cut your, your, your budget, Minister, you've got to uh, take account of what the realities are. When people are made redundant, that's they go out the door one way and come in the door of government for financial aid. So it would be a very slavishly rigid and foolhardy policy to say, well, let's just cut 
that budget without taking account of what the economic realities are. So what, what do we do? And what does this open budget do? It effectively gives you, the public, a bigger say in public sector policy. It encourages you to be more active participants in the formulation, the implementation, and the oversight of the budget process. And what we also are committing to do, and that's why prior to Christmas I uh, released, and you've heard about the open budget report, which is a fairly thick document, not too thick, about 35 pages, so that you know what some of the issues are, and it also floats some ideas as to what some of the options that can be considered are. Now recently, relatively recently, we provided payroll relief to the retail industry in an effort to save the jobs of 4,000 Bermudians that are in the industry. To encourage Bermudians to keep their money in Bermuda, I raised the duty to 35%. And many criticized the decision, and many felt that they had every right to stimulate and to to spend their dollars as they saw fit in Bermuda. Now what we said is that this was implemented to help save jobs in the local retail sector. Most of the jobs in the retail sector are held by Bermudians. And what the figures are is about just over $1 billion is spent annually in the Bermuda retail sector. Now what does this mean? It means that for every $1 million spent, it supports roughly four jobs in the local sector. $70 million spent overseas during business and vacation trips means that that's equivalent to about roughly 280 jobs. 280 jobs not in Bermuda. The $70 million that is spent overseas doesn't include the value of merchandise that is imported directly through courier services for personal use. So the total of the retail purchases that is spent overseas is certainly clearly higher than the $70 million. The decision taken was certainly made to preserve jobs in the local sector and also to support jobs in the local sector. And the airport customs duty was increased also to help offset the reduction in payroll tax receipts given the zero rate concession to the retail outlets for a six month period. And that was at an estimated cost of $9 million. The estimated net revenue lost, in other words, the, the amount of money that did not come into the government coffers to pay for services was projected to be in the region of three to $5 million. So that, that just gives you the context, because I wanted some people feel that the government is making out like a bandit, hardly as a result of the increase. In fact, we're still in the hole in terms of as a result of what we've given up. And what was the policy thinking? The policy thinking was to try to insulate our local economy and to also to try and preserve jobs.